The history of philosophy uh, is, uh, in very large part, the history of the history of philosophy. Uh, it is a very curious thing to try to mark the beginning uh, of that which we call philosophy. Uh, even if we track it back over recent centuries, we find many philosophers denying that other purported philosophers are doing philosophy. Philosophy seems to be largely a matter of uh, inventing itself or assuring oneself that what had gone on up to one's arrival on the scene uh, is defective in some massively important way and consequently a new beginning uh, is proposed. Now, of course, if we took that very seriously, if, uh, as people said uh, at the turn of this um, uh, century, uh, that there was uh, a new beginning in philosophy, that the arrival of the sciences had completely redefined what philosophy is, uh, if uh, after the war, uh, Second World War, we took seriously the view uh, that philosophy had taken a linguistic turn, which pretty well made everything prior to it uh, obsolete, uh, there wouldn't be much need for the history of philosophy, or at least it could begin in 1945, let's say. Uh, we're not going to assume that. We're going to assume that the history of philosophy uh, covers a great many uh, years. As a matter of fact, two and a half millennia. Uh, the first philosophers uh, that uh, uh, enter into our records uh, by hearsay, of course, at first, uh, date from the uh, 6th century BC. Uh, how do we know about them? By and large, if they wrote, their writings have not come down to us. By and large, we are relying on accounts that are given of them, narrative accounts, uh, citations, uh, sometimes very long swatches, which purport to be from the writings uh, of these people. But they will be found, for example, uh, in a philosopher we will be considering in the next lecture, uh, Plato. Plato often talks about those who had preceded him uh, in philosophy and speaks uh, of them sometimes with high praise and sometimes uh, critically. Uh, Plato uh, lived into the 4th century BC, dies in the middle of the, of the 4th century. Uh, so his, um, his uh, witness uh, to his predecessors is separated from them uh, in time uh, and is very much separated from, uh, from us in time. For about a thousand years, there are people who uh, give us accounts of figures uh, at the very beginning of philosophy. Uh, it goes up into the sixth century of our era uh, with Simplicius, uh, a Neoplatonic uh, commentator on Aristotle, who in the course of explaining uh, writings of Aristotle where uh, a uh, earlier philosopher is mentioned, Simplicius will go to the trouble of retailing to us uh, the uh, texts or writings uh, of that particular uh, uh, author, that particular philosopher to whom Aristotle is referring. Uh, he is one of our, uh, one of our um, most reliable sources. But Plato, uh, first of all, you know, just in terms of doing philosophy, uh, refers to those who had done similar things before him. And as I say, he refers to them uh, either with praise or, or with uh, blame. Uh, Aristotle, perhaps more systematically than Plato, uh, will try to give us an account of what has happened up to this point uh, in a particular discipline. Uh, sometimes, as we will see, we'll be talking about him in the third lecture, uh, Aristotle will say there really wasn't anything like this prior to my efforts. Uh, he will say this about his logical writings, which are very extensive. Uh, and say, well, there just, there just really weren't uh, uh, efforts to lay out argumentation, uh, forms of argumentation prior uh, to the works of Aristotle. We call collectively the organon or instrument of philosophizing the logical work. More often than not, he is going to retail for us, recount uh, to us uh, what uh, his predecessors had said uh, about the subject matter uh, at, uh, at hand. So uh, we, could enumerate, uh, we could enumerate the various sources. Uh, let me just as a general proposition refer you to uh, Kirk and Raven's uh, Pre-Socratic Philosophers, which is a standard uh, collection of texts uh, of the figures, such as we have them, uh, of these figures uh, prior to 
uh, Plato, let's put it that way. And you'll see when you look at it that by and large these passages are drawn uh, from later figures. St. Clement of Alexandria, for example, is a favorite uh, source uh, for our knowledge uh, of, the, of the pre-Socratic. So I mentioned that, uh, first of all, to give you a sense of the, of the uh, um, duration uh, of philosophy that we are confronting here. Uh, it, uh, we have figures from the 6th century BC, uh, and here we are at the end of the, of the second millennium, and we're trying to reconstruct uh, what it is that uh, happened when philosophy had its beginning. Now, in order to identify the beginning of philosophy, we unfortunately have to have some working notion of what uh, philosophy is. And it is one of the more interesting, it seems to me, one of the more interesting uh, discussions in the sources, in Plato and in Aristotle, when they give us an account of what their predecessors uh, had uh, said, uh, what they think they and their predecessors are doing when they talk about uh, philosophy. Uh, it was fashionable when I was uh, a young student uh, to recount the progress in Greek philosophy uh, as one from uh, uh, an interest in the religious, in the divine, uh, and, uh, and the remote and transcendent, uh, as the starting point and then a progression from that to uh, a increasing interest in the things of this world so that we would have, uh, as Auguste Comte would give us, a kind of movement from the metaphysical or theological uh, to the natural, to the, to the scientific. Uh, this is, to say the least, a fanciful uh, reconstruction of the development of philosophy, particularly if it's meant to uh, cover the earliest centuries of philosophy. But uh, a typical book in this, uh, in this line is uh, Cornforth. Uh, F. M. Cornforth's uh, work from religion to philosophy, uh, and he is suggesting that uh, they kind of got over their interest in things that uh, were not material and spatial and uh, and the like. There is, however, something uh, to that title that's uh, worth uh, retaining, and that is this: that Aristotle will often refer to Hesiod uh, and uh, to uh, Homer. Uh, and uh, he will refer to certain theological poets, as he calls them, who are predecessors, uh, antecedents in some sense of uh, philosophy. Uh, and the question that then arises is, well, how do you distinguish? How do you distinguish uh, between what uh, the so-called theological poets uh, are doing uh, and what philosophers uh, them, uh, themselves uh, are are up to. One of the ways in which we will see this uh, question is uh, answered is by linking uh, the religious and the poet uh, to the philosopher in terms of what generates uh, the kind of discourse that uh, all of these, uh, uh, each of these three might put forward. And the genesis, uh, both Plato and Aristotle tell us, is wonder looking around, looking at oneself, looking at the world, raising questions about what the point of our temporal existence is, uh, and trying to give an account of that. 